So in this video, let's talk about the idea of weak electrolyte, strong electrolyte, and non-electrolyte, and what they are. So an electrolyte is just any compound that dissolves in water and conduct electricity, okay, essentially. Okay. Now, strong, elect strong electrolytes, they dissolve completely, so they disassociate completely in water. So, in fact, if I take sodium chloride and I put that in water, okay, I'll actually get sodium cations and chlorine anions okay so this will this will disassociate completely okay now weak electrolytes only partially disassociate and so if i take acetic acid and actually put it in water i'll actually get some h plus source plus its conjugate base okay now non-electrolyte uh usually does not disassociate at all and they're usually just molecular compounds okay now Strong electrolytes are usually ionic compounds, okay? So when we have a metal and a non-metal, you should be thinking about strong electrolyte, okay? Whenever you usually see just molecular compounds, they're non-electrolyte. And whenever you see some sort of compound with some sort of H added on, that, that's acid. And so if I actually throw it in water, I'll get its conjugate base like acetic acid and actually H plus source. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples and see if we can identify whether it's a strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte, or non-electrolyte. So sodium chloride, again, if I throw this in water, I'll actually get sodium plus and chlorine minus. Okay, again, notice that this is a ionic compound. I have chlorine, which is a non-metal, and, and sodium, which is metal. So anytime you see ionic compounds, think of strong electrolyte. And so in fact, this is actually a strong electrolyte. Okay, now what about this? C7860. If I throw this in water, okay, if I throw this in water, actually nothing would happen. Okay, if I throw this in water, actually nothing would happen. And so in fact, this is actually a non-electrolyte. See, there's no excess of hydrogen hanging out where I could take it. Well, I can draw its conjugate base. And there's no ions involved, so it cannot be a strong electrolyte. So the only option is weak or non-electrolyte. And you can definitely see that there's no excess of hydrogen um, for, for it to dis dis uh, disassociate into some sort of H+. Plus, okay. Now, what about this one? Well, again, we just talked about it. It's acetic acid. And you can definitely see that we have this hydrogen hanging out on, on, on the top here. And so, in fact, if I take this and add water, like we said, we'll get some H plus source. So some C2H3O2 minus. Okay, and this will constitute what we call a weak electrolyte. Okay, and notice the difference between weak and strong electrolyte. Okay, the big difference is strong electrolytes are usually ionic compounds, so they have some sort of metal in them. Weak electrolyte, well, as you could see, we have the it will disassociate into H plus plus its conjugate base, but you could see that there's no metal in this compound here. Okay, and that's a big tone difference. Now, what about lithium phosphate? Well, if we throw this in the water, well, I see a metal here, which is lithium, and I see a polyatomic ion, which is phos uh, phosphate, okay? Now, anytime I see metal and non-metal, I'm always thinking about strong electrolyte. In fact, lithium phosphate is a strong electrolyte. In fact, if I disassociate, if I throw this in water, I'll actually get lithium plus, plus PO4, 3 minus. Okay, so these are the two substituents I'll get. And this constitutes a strong electrolyte. Okay, so the main difference between strong electrolyte and weak electrolyte, look for metal and a non-metal combination. That will give you a strong electrolyte. A weak electrolyte, usually in the form of this, where we have some sort of H plus at, um, at the end, where if we throw that in water, that will disassociate it, give us its conjugate base. And non-electrolytes are usually in the form this way, where it's just usually molecular compounds, and those won't do anything in water.